What do all those symbols in stable diffusion really mean? How can we write prompt words so that the pictures we get are more what we want? When you see those complex stable diffusion prompt words, do you feel confused too? Don't worry. This video will help you with all kinds of problems when you fill in prompts. First off, let's check out the basic principle of prompt words. Prompt words are separated by commas. And you can put prompt words on different lines, but you still need a comma at the end of each line. As for weight, each prompt word has a default weight of 1, but the words at the front get a higher weight. So, put important words at the front if you can. Finally, keep the number of prompt words within 75. If there are too many words, they won't have much control over the picture. Next up, let's talk about what each symbol means. First off, there are parentheses, square brackets, and curly braces. These are mainly used to tweak the weights of keywords. When you put a hint word in parentheses, its weight becomes 1.1, you can use up to three parentheses at the same time. When n parentheses are used, the weight of the hint is 1.1 to the power of n. Curly braces are also for increasing the weight of a hint. Curly braces are used to increase weight too. Each layer of curly braces increases the weight by 0.05. The adjustment with curly braces is much smaller than that with parentheses. Square brackets are used to decrease weight. One square bracket makes the weight of a hint word 0.9 times less. Three square brackets make the weight 0.7 to 9. The easiest way to adjust weights is to add a colon after the hint word in parentheses and then fill in the desired weight value directly after the colon. It's recommended to set this value between 0.3 and 1.5. For example, if you enter cherry blossoms, kittens, green leaves, and set a different weight value for cherry blossoms, you can control the proportion of cherry blossoms in the whole picture. The pointed brackets are mainly used to call Laura. The format is Laura, trigger word, weight value. After calling Laura, images with specific features can be generated. It should be noted that in Tensor, Laura trigger words can be directly used with one click, which is very convenient. Underscores act as a link to make the keywords more closely connected. For example, a milk cake might be understood by stable diffusion as a glass of milk and a cake. But if milk and cake are connected by underscores, then stable diffusion will understand milk and cake as a whole. Next, let's check out some advanced syntax now. How do we control when a prompt kicks in? First off, you can use a combo of square brackets and colons. There's a number after cologne. It means the prompt starts rendering from that point. A double cologne. That means the prompt in parentheses renders till that point. When there's one prompt, it's like this. But there can be two prompts in parentheses, like this. The two prompts are separated by a cologne. So for the first 70% of the rendering, stone is on, and for the next 30%, flower is on. If the two prompts in parentheses are separated by a vertical line, like this, it's alternate sampling. So red hair and blue hair prompts alternately, and you'll end up with red and blue hair. After you get the hang of the basic syntax, let's check out the recommended way to describe the overall prompt words. Picture quality and painting style words have a big impact on the overall look of the picture, so it's a good idea to write them on the top. I've got some tips on picture quality prompts, mostly, they work for everything, but for different styles of pictures, there will be some specific quality words too, like pixel style, pixar style, ink painting style, and so on. Add a comma at the end of this and you can start a new line if you want. Then there's the description of the main part of the picture, my character, age, hairstyle, hair color, what they're doing, and so on. The more detailed you are, the more accurate the generated picture will be. Add a comma after writing and start a new line. Next up is the description of the lighting in the environment, like a snowy evening or a sunny meadow. Add a description of the lighting used at the end of this. The last line is for adding the trigger word of the Laura you want to use. After positive prompts, fill in the negative prompts. Generally, just filling in some general negative prompt is fine. If you're using the Flux model, it won't let you fill in negative prompts on your own. When you're using Tensor's classic workbench, you can just fill in the prompts in the language you know. After that, click the translation button right below. When you're out of ideas for the prompts, you can choose to generate them randomly or by recognizing pictures. Oh, 
and you can also check out the posts recommended on the homepage to get some inspiration. There are a bunch of Tensor models for you to pick from. All of Tensor's models are online, no need to download. They're one click and don't ask too much of your graphics card. Best of all, they're free, you can get free credits every day by doing some stuff. Click the website link under the video to give it a try. Any questions or things you want to hear about next time? Just subscribe me in the comments section. See ya!